All right, continuing on with our factoring trinomials, we have another trinomial. So um, I have three, eight, and a four. Doesn't look like I'm going to have a GCF on this one. This is the first time that we're going to have a, a leading term in front of our variable, our leading term um, x squared, and we won't have a GCF to take out. So these are going to work a little differently than we had in our first couple of examples. So when I multiply the 3 and the 4, I get 12. So I'm going to find the factors of 3 times 4 is 12 that add to give me a positive 8. Okay, so I want to find the factors of 12 that add to give me a positive 8. So let's look for the factors of 12. 1 and 12. 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Well, 2 and 6 will give me 8, so I don't need to do the 3 and the 4. Let me erase that one. So 1 and 12 is 13. That doesn't work. But 2 and 6, I can get 8. Now remember, when you're adding, you have to have the same sign, and they're going to both match that middle sign. So since I want to get a positive 8, they're both going to be positive. So I'm going to divide by the leading term. Now this is the first time that our leading term is not just an x squared. It's a 3x. So I'm going to divide by a 3x. Now unlike our last examples where when we just divided by the x we went ahead and did the bottoms up, this time it's going to be a little different. You need to look at these new terms as individual fractions. So I actually have like 2 over 3 as a fraction. Can you reduce the fraction 2 over 3? No. So this means that this is in simplest form and I can bottom up. So 3x plus 2 is our fraction, um, I mean our, our factor for that first factor. Now let's look at the next fraction. Look at the 6 over 3. And you're only looking at this part, the 6 over 3. Can I reduce 6 over 3? Well, of course. 3 will go into 3 and 3 will go into 6. So I can reduce this to 3 will go into 3 one time, 3 will go into 6 two times. So this is just like the fraction 2 over 1. Now the reason why this part is very important is if you did not reduce your fraction, you would have a different factor. This is 1x, which is the same thing as x, plus 2. So I've reduced the fraction 6 over 3, and I now have the factor x plus 2. And this is in factored form. So once you get to the point where you have leading terms um, other than just x for your first number and your trinomial, your bottoms up step comes a little more difficult, but not super duper hard. So let's go ahead and do, um, I'm going to leave that there so you can see it. Let's go ahead and work on number 8. Alright, so again, we're doing our bottoms up. 2 times 5 is 10. So I want to find the factors of 10 that add to give me a negative 7. So we're adding to get a negative 7. So our factors of 10 are 1 and 10, and that adds to give me 11. That doesn't work. 2 and 5 will add to give me 7. Great. So since I'm adding, they both have to be the same sign, and they both need to match that middle term. So they both need to be negative. Now, when I do my bottoms up step, I'm going to divide by that leading term. The leading term this time is a 2x. So I'm going to divide both of them by 2x. Now again, you want to look at them individually. You want to look at the fraction 5 over 2. Can I reduce the fraction 5 over 2? No. So that means that I'm going to go ahead and bottoms up and get 2x minus 5. Okay? Now let's look at the second fraction. I have 2 over 2. So if I have the fraction 2 over 2, I can reduce that. 2 will go into 2 one time. 2 will go into 2 one time. So that means that I'm going to have, when I do my bottoms up, 1x is the same thing as x, so x minus 1. 
and that's after I reduce my fraction, I have x minus 1 left when I bottoms up. Now, if you're getting to the point where you're, I'm not sure if I have the right answer or anything like that, you can always check your factoring by multiplying, doing the full method, distributing. So you can always distribute out. You should get what you started with. If you don't get what you started with, you do not have the right answer. Okay? So um, keep that in mind every time you're doing this, that you can always do your multiplication of polynomials to come out with what you started with. And I'm going to pick up what number 9 on the next video.